and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often fall. Welcome to Worship with Center and Nebo United Methodist Churches. I'm Philip Cook, the pastor. We are humbled that you have joined us. On this January 31st, my sermon focuses on how the people responded to Jesus. It's entitled, Speaking with Authority. It's found in Mark 1, verses 21 through 28. Let me take a moment to offer my thanks and appreciation for those who have by their tithes and offerings supported Center United Methodist Church with your gifts to Pat Carpenter at 506 Nora Drive in Newburn, and to Nebo United Methodist Church with your gifts to Maryland Parks at 216 Park Street in Newburn. Nebo continues in in-person worship at 9 a.m. each Sunday. Center has decided to delay in-person worship until at least February 7th. 
Our prayers continue for the countless needs within our own community, within our county, within our state, our nation, and across our world. We continue to see prayers being answered and lives being strengthened and comforted. Will you join me as we approach the throne of grace? May we pray. O God of the ages, our souls yearn for you. There is none to compare to your patience, your love, your justice, and your long-suffering. Though we look upon the beauty of your creation all around us, it cannot satisfy the longings of our very being for your holy presence. So it is with bowed heads and humble spirits that we reach out to you and find you reaching out to us through your Holy Spirit. O oh God, like the servant Isaiah of old, in your presence we must cry out, Woe is me! For here we recognize the depth of our own sinfulness. Too long have rebellion and self-righteousness plagued our lives. Here we would shrink from confessing. Here we would turn away in guilt and shame. But in Christ we find your overcoming, forgiving love flooding our souls. So peace and joy fill the places once occupied by pain and regret. O Holy Lord, we, we claim this promise for all who are far from you in sin, in sickness, in grief, and in rejection. We claim it even for the ones who feel no need of your forgiving love. Make us, O God, a people and a church where Christ is known and experienced, where forgiveness and healing are found, where we gather to praise and scatter to serve. We pray it in the righteous name of Jesus the Christ, remembering how he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This past weekend I saw an article on television announcing the retirement of Tom Brokaw after 55 years in television. It reminded me of a story that I want to use to begin this sermon today. Tom Brokaw was wandering, he tells this on himself, he said he was wandering through Bloomingdale's department store in New York City, and he noticed a man watching him. The man kept staring at him. Every time he would turn and look, the man was staring, and then he began to approach him. Brokaw was sure that he was about to reap some of the fruits of being a New York celebrity. And the man pointed his finger at him, and he said, Tom Brokaw, right? Right, he said. You used to do the morning news on KMTV in Omaha, right? That's right, he said, getting ready for some accolades. I knew it the minute I spotted you, he said. And then he paused and added, whatever happened to you? That question might well be one that we would ask of Jesus in the first 30 years of his life. After that big rush of excitement, when he was born, the shepherds and the angel choir, we don't hear much from him. There was a visit at the temple on the eighth day there was the coming of the wise men. And then at the age of 12, we see that little story of him arguing with the teachers in the temple. And then nothing. But then all of a sudden, epiphany. After years of waiting and preparation, God is pulling back the curtain and bringing his son to center stage. And this is how Mark tells that story. Will you join me as we look at Mark 1, verses 21 through 28? 
they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus was in Capernaum, which was his home base in Galilee, and he was teaching in the synagogue. And Mark says that they were astonished at his teaching because he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The scribes were, were learned men, you see. They had the right credentials. They'd been to the right schools. They could quote the proper people. They could say the right phrases. They were teachers of the law. Their doctrinal statements were flawless, and yet, and yet their knowledge of God was only secondhand. Then Jesus came, a carpenter of Nazareth, the son of a carpenter, with no formal religious education, no place of power within the religious system. And yet, when he spoke, people listened. Mark chapter 12, verse 37 says, The common people heard him gladly. For Jesus did not speak in the rhetoric of the scribes, but when he spoke, the people felt their hearts stirred. His words exploded the old traditional barriers as he carried people's vision far beyond themselves and their world to what they never even dared dream about. Mark shows us that Jesus came with a new teaching. And so we must ask, what is this new teaching? It is not so much what he said, and it's not so much the miracles he performed. The new teaching was the authority with which he spoke. You see, Jesus spoke with a dynamic authority. His teaching was new because it involved commitment and not just comment. The teaching of Jesus required more than just sitting at his feet. It calls us to get up and to follow him. A brief look at history confirms the fact that this is what Jesus' followers in every age have done. Let me remind you of the story of the founder of the Lutheran faith, Martin Luther who began publishing abroad his writings against the practice of the established church, the Catholic Church. And the time came for him to take a stand, and he took it. He was called forth before all the ecclesiastical and political powers of medieval Europe to answer his writings. And he responded, I am bound by the scriptures. I have quoted and my conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and I will not recant anything, for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. God help me. Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. You see, to walk in the authority of Christ can place us in conflict with the powers around us. Such is the call that arises in the teachings of Christ for our lives. The gospel writer Mark is intent 
from the first of his gospel to show us Christ in all of his power and all of his authority. The people heard it in his words and were astonished at his teachings. And now they see how that authority goes into action. An unclean spirit interrupts the teaching, saying, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One of God? Have you come to destroy us? And in short order, Jesus shows his power and he breaks the hold of the evil influences in human life. Be silent and come out of him. With authority, he commands even the impure spirits. and They obey him. Jesus' authority was independent of tradition and free of prejudice. His authority was based on his relationship with his father and his loyalty was to the truth. He spoke with the authority of God and those who heard him recognized his authority. Throughout the scriptures, the writers are determined to show us that Jesus had unique, all-powerful authority, authority over nature, the demonic, over diseases and over the hunger, even over the grave. We have witnessed the rise and fall of many gurus and teachers who have promised much but delivered very little. Jesus' authority is not for the years. It's for eternity. The Bible is clear. Jesus' authority has become our authority because he has given it to us. In Mark thirteen thirty four. Jesus said, for a man, for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, some of Jesus' last words, the great commission, the very end of his earthly ministry. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. Lo, I'm with you always to the close of the age. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, in his penetrating book, The First Circle, the famous Russian author who defected to America, makes an interesting observation of how the Russian authorities handle the church. He writes, No one stopped the churches from ringing their bells. They can break communion bread any way they want. They can have their processions with their crosses, but they in no way will allow them to have any connection to social or civic affairs. The churches are allowed to go through the motions so long as they do not have an influence upon society. What bothered the scribes and Pharisees about Jesus was not his prayers or his preaching. It was the fact that the authority of his prayers and his sermons moved the people to action. Friends, I wonder if the church still has that concept of authority. So often our problem is not that we do not have the authority. It is that we do not use the authority we have. It is time that we quit defining the problems of the world and start applying the power and authority of Christ and the church to the problems. We have been given authority by God through Christ to heal, to proclaim, to change, to bring redemption, to expel. We are under imperative from God and we need not fear principalities or powers or even death. 
For Christ has given all authority on heaven and earth to us. Now, we need to start applying that authority. The ball's in our court. And if the claims of Jesus' authority are true, then that will require a response from you and me. Do you remember Shakespeare's play, King Lear? In there, the Earl of Kent offers his service to the king. He wants, he says, to serve him truly that he may put his trust to love him that is honest, to converse with him who is wise, to fear judgment. When the king asked the earl, Dost thou know me, fella? The earl says, No, sir, but thou hast in thy countenance that which I would fain call master. The king responds, What is it? And the response comes in one word, Authority. That, in a literary way, is what we do as Christians. We are called to serve Him, to love Him, to converse with Him, to trust Him, because we recognize Christ alone is God's authority for us. If the church is to remain true to Christ, it must speak with authority not as an authority in politics or economics or business or human psychology, but must faithfully speak the truth of God in love, calling all people into a creative, redemptive fellowship of the faith. The church, with her established place in society, by exercising her God-given authority, can again become the moving agent within society. I believe that. No longer need we to echo society and offer a commentary on what the world is becoming. Rather, we are called to rise up, friends, and to lead the way into a better day. It is to this cause that Christ invites us. Will you join him today? May we pray. Holy and righteous and loving God, through your Son, Jesus, who came to live among us, who spoke your word for all time, for all people, may we hear and may we heed. And may that word live in us and in our day. May our churches feel the power of your presence And may the light of your love radiate through your church, scattered in the community, that it may be a drawing power by your Holy Spirit to build up the kingdom among us. In Jesus' precious name, amen.